The scripture reading is from Acts 16, 9 to 15. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing there urging him and saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. And when Paul had seen the vision immediately, he sought to go to, into Macedonia, including that God has called us to preach the gospel to them. So setting sail from Troas, he had a direct voyage to Samothrace and the following day to Neapolis and there to Philippi, which is leading city of the district of Macedonia and the Roman in colony. We remain in this city some days and on the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate to the riverside where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who had come there one who heard us was a woman named Lydia from the city of Thyatira, a seller of purple goods who was a worshiper of God. She, the Lord opened her heart and paid attention to what was said by Paul. And after she was baptized, her household as well, she urged us saying, if you had judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay and she prevailed upon us. So as we look at our scripture for today, we find Paul receiving a vision from God. Paul sees a man in Macedonia asking him to come and help them. And Paul immediately gets underway to go to Macedonia. And after he arrives there, he went outside on the Sabbath and began preaching the gospel of Jesus. When Lydia hears this, the Lord opens her heart so she could pay attention. Her, she is baptized as well as her whole household. And then she asks Paul to come and stay in her household. So when we hear this part of scripture, what jumps out to me is the vision that Paul was sent by God. So my question for you today to think about is this, does God still send us visions? Now, throughout my sermons, I tend to focus more on what I believe are practical applications of the scripture that we read. I do not always delve deeply into theology. However, in order for us to understand that God still sends visions to us today, we do need to think about our own theological beliefs. See, there is a school of thought that God does not send visions anymore. There are people who believe that God simply created the world and then stepped away. There are people who believe that God created the world, sent his son, and that was it. And then take, and however, we do not believe, let's re rewind there. We do believe those things. However, we believe that also God sent us the Holy Spirit to dwell amongst us as well. So if we're going to take that point of view of the other two groups, we would be denying that the Holy Spirit has been sent to dwell among us. But we believe in a triune God. That means we believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so if you believe that there are no more visions in this world, then what you are saying is, you do not believe in the Trinity. Okay, that is the end of our theological thoughts for right this second. So let's move on to what it could mean for our lives. So since we do believe in the Holy Spirit and that it moves among us, does that mean that we should have visions all the time? Should we be expecting God to send us visions of what he wants from us? Well, I believe the answer to that question is yes. Now, perhaps you're finding yourself doubting this this morning because you don't feel that God has ever given you visions. Maybe you are listening this morning and you are worried that I'm about to go all Pentecostal on you today. But what I think we must make sure to understand about visions from God and the Holy Spirit is this. It is not always a huge thing when a vision comes to us. We also need to allow that a vision might not just be something that we see, but also things that we feel and that we hear at times. 
You see, somehow we as a people have developed this idea that visions are always some major event. That we need something like Paul experienced here, a, visit, a vivid dream of a person or telling him that what needs to be done. It's as if we think we need a man to be there telling us, please, please come help us now. We need you. We think that we need to see something like John did when he wrote Revelations, that it has to be this great prophecy in order for it to be a vision coming to us from God. But I do not believe that is the case. I believe God send us, sends us visions that might be just like these men experienced. But I also believe that he sends us visions that are on a much smaller scale. I do believe that he gives us visions all the time. However, we are not always willing or able to see the things that God is trying to show us. You might be thinking to yourself, well, pastor, if I felt like God was speaking to me, surely I would act upon these things he's telling me to do. If I thought God was giving me vision, surely I would recognize it and I would be able to act upon it right away. Now, I know that we all think that is the case. We believe that we would be able to see, hear, and feel what God is calling us to do, and then we would go out and do it. But allow me to discuss, to discuss a reason why. Maybe we're missing the things that God is calling us to. See, I am of a generation that has grown up in both the analog and digital age. For me, when I was younger, we didn't have things like the internet or the constant streaming of information. It came about as I was growing. And now we know that it's become so, more, so prevalent in our lives that it's nearly impossible to escape. I've often heard people complain about how we're all addicted to our smart devices these days. That you can't have a conversation with anyone anymore because they're always buried in some sort of screen. And I know I hear this most often when people that are older express it about a younger generation, those that have grown up only in the digital age. But I think we can all find ourselves guilty of allowing ourselves to become too distracted by these devices. I know that I personally have an app on my phone that tracks how much I use it every week so that I can see how often I am using it. And I don't think of myself as a person who's constantly on their phone or can't live without it. In fact, I was one of the people that was very late to adopt carrying a cell phone at all. Uh, when I first was asked to get a cell phone, I said, why? <laughs> if people want to know where I am, the people that need to know will know where I am and they'll be able to find me. But ultimately I was convinced uh, to start carrying one. And so I don't think that I'm a person who's constantly on there. However, each week when I look at that usage report, I am surprised by how many hours I've actually spent staring at that screen. And that may not be the case for all of us. It may not be that we are constantly looking at a cell phone but how much time do we spend watching television each week? How much time do some of us uh, spend playing video games? Maybe the question would be, how much time do you spend reading something other than scripture? Now, I'm not trying to tell you that you can't use any of these things or that you shouldn't allow yourself to have some downtime. But when we consider these things and how much time we're using them, does it begin to compare to the amount of time that you are praying each week. If I think if we are honest, we will find that we spend much more time doing these other things than we do in prayer and meditation. And what that means for us is this. How can we expect to see God's visions if we are not looking? How can we expect to hear God's call if we are not listening? And how can we expect to feel God moving us if we do not open our hearts to his message? You see, I believe that God is constantly giving us visions and calls to what he wants from us. See, he does so through his word. Have you ever read scripture and felt as if it was jumping off the page at you? Like it was written for you just in that moment. I believe that God sends visions through our worship. When you hear a song and you feel inspired through its music or lyrics. If you hear a sermon and it feels like it's being directed at you. I believe that is God trying to give you vision. You see, we don't, it doesn't always have to be a huge thing, but the Spirit can inspire us to do things on a small scale as well. 
And small things, when added together, can often lead to something much bigger. When we act upon what God calls us to do, the results are never small. They are always big because we faithfully carry out what God wants of us. Now there is another issue that we must discuss when it comes to visions from God. You see, it is this. It is when we see something or feel something that God is calling us to do, but we choose not to do so. See, sometimes the vision or the call comes in very clearly, but we choose not to listen. Now, what would have happened to Lydia and her family if Paul hadn't followed the vision that God put on his heart? Would they have been saved? What about all the people that they then witnessed to in turn? Would they have been saved? You see, we find ourselves in that same place that Paul was. We're given a vision. We have two choices. We can ignore it. And now hear me, church, when you ignore a vision, you do so at your own peril. And I can personally attest to the fact that God will continue to put that vision on your heart until you follow through with what he is asking. And I will simply remind you that it is not out of the realm of God's power that when he gives you a vision or a call and you choose to run the other way, that you will be swallowed up by a large fish and held in his belly until you agree to follow through with that vision. That is one choice. The other choice is we can get up immediately and act upon what we are called to do. We can see how God will help us carry out his vision. And we can be faithful servants the way that we profess to be. We can follow that example that Paul gives to us. We can trust that God will show us the way when we are struggling to understand. So as we go forth today, let us make sure that we are taking proper time in our life to ask God what his visions for us might be. Let us make sure that we are inviting Jesus Christ to help us help guide our actions. And let us make sure that we are inviting the Holy Spirit to guide our hearts, open our minds, and tune our ears to what God wants us to be doing. And most of all, when we are given a vision, let us act upon it with joy and expedience. My challenge for you this week is this. Take time this week to stop and pray and ask God to show you how he wants you to be of service. Amen.